This is a seat of local government. Our elected councillors governing at a local level, addressing local issues, affecting change for the benefit of their constituents. Yet their power is, in reality, severely restricted and their hands tied by legislation and directives created far from this council chamber. Often, the outcome of local democracy is influenced more by politicians from 27 European states voting here in the European Parliament. People just don't realise the extent to which virtually everybody that works for our local councils spends their lives enacting EU legislation that gets voted through the European Parliament and which, of course, only countries like us bother to actually put into law. This video aims to highlight a sample of just eight local issues upon which the EU Parliament has usurped the control of central and local government in the UK, often to disastrous effect. Some appear scandalous, others farcical, but all illustrate that the EU is the hidden local issue. We start with EU procurement rules that require public bodies that tender for supplies and services to publish those tenders Europe-wide, not just in the UK. This means councils will have to ensure other suppliers from European countries are considered when they intend to purchase anything from new desks to plant and equipment or awarding contracts such as highways maintenance. A recent survey by the Local Government Association, the membership organisation for council officers, revealed the real impact of these EU rules. When asked, the majority of council officers felt procurement had become more costly and burdensome as a result. 50% thought that the directive has not led to more efficient and effective procurement practice. 66% stated that the procurement costs and administrative burdens had worsened as a result. 69% identified dealing with challenges from unsuccessful bidders as an issue which presents a difficulty to the Council's procurement activities. It was commonly mentioned that the EU regulations appear to push the balance of power to suppliers and hampers the ability of Councils to achieve best value from contracts. Such fear inevitably leads to cautious, risk-averse procurement procedures that stifle innovation and the chance to deliver savings. The impact is being felt widely. The National Housing Federation estimates that complying with the rules costs housing associations £30 million annually. Procurement rules are highly bureaucratic, extremely expensive, reduce our capacity to build new homes and bring no obvious benefit. Similarly, the Chief Executive of Partnership for Schools was damning. The EU's overly complex bureaucratic processes were so demanding that the project was always likely to hemorrhage money and those at the helm strained to satisfy the exacting procurement standards. Buses on longer distance routes are now having to stop halfway in order to sidestep EU legislation on drivers' hours of work. Routes more than 31 miles require tachographs to be fitted and their route numbers changed to avoid the law. A knock-on effect is that drivers cannot work more than five days a week nor on their rest days. Due to the cost of fitting the tachographs, some bus companies have decided to scrap certain rural bus routes. For example, this has meant the end of weekly bus services to some villages in the Yorkshire Dales and in Cumbria. Larger 60-ton lorries will be common on our roads under controversial EU plans. The 50% heavier and 30% longer super lorries could be introduced to harmonise lorry weights across Europe. The proposed one rule for all countries would mean the maximum weights in the UK rising from 44 tonnes to 60 tonnes, raising concerns of pollution, congestion and of safety. Locally, it will be county and local authorities that will have to pick up the bill for the additional damage to the road networks from lorries that are just too big for the UK. The Department for Transport and the government line is that they don't want them and wish to keep the current 44-tonne limit. But they will have no choice if the draft EU directive is made law. 
post offices play a vital role in keeping communities alive. Without the post office counter services, many rural shops would close. The UK government acknowledged this, providing subsidies to try to ensure post offices can stay open. But our partners in Brussels intervened, with a directive that insists that the size of the postal market reserved for national monopolies must be reduced and that the UK government must seek permission before any state aid is granted. EU postal service directives forced the British government to open up Britain's postal industry to European businesses, such as Deutsche Post, to undercut the Royal Mail in the profitable parts of the industry, such as Business Post. The result was that the Royal Mail was left with less profitable sectors and now lies stricken in a critical financial state. Without further support from the UK government, closure of local post offices was inevitable to suit EU directives intended to benefit foreign delivery companies. In the next 10 years, 3 million new homes need to be built in the southeast of England alone built to accommodate the unprecedented growth in UK population. The largest single factor contributing to the number of new households being formed is net immigration. That's a new home for immigrants every six minutes. Within 20 years, that equates to seven additional cities the size of Birmingham. That growing pressure to accommodate new households is being felt across the country. Yet central government and local councils have little power to influence the consequential level of demand on local services. Well, open door immigration is having a massive effect on local councils, on planning and on house building. We have to build hundreds of new homes every single day just to accommodate the increasing population. And the pressure on services is massive. Our schools, our hospitals, our social services should be for the people of this country, not for the whole of Eastern Europe. May 2011 saw the introduction of new EU rules to guarantee UK benefits such as unemployment and housing benefits to new EU passport holders. Some 100,000 people are expected to take advantage of this at a cost of £19.7 million a week. The governments working at height regulations were introduced in 2005 following another EU directive. The practical repercussions are wide-reaching. For example, the use of ladders. Some councils have banned them across their estate properties for fear of litigation. The regulations have been interpreted by some councils and contractors to mean that scaffolding must be used instead. One city council has allegedly banned ladders from being used for even the most menial jobs and the additional contractor charges have soared by 300% to around 1.4 million. EU directives dictate that by 2020, around half of UK household waste must be diverted from landfills. To encourage us, the EU Parliament has imposed an onerous UK landfill tax on local councils for every tonne of waste that they send to landfill. Councils are desperate to avoid these millions of pounds of landfill penalties. And whilst recycling is increasing, there are economic benefits in considering waste incinerators, an option that is incentivized by the Treasury, setting aside £2 billion for grants for waste treatment projects. The impact of this EU intervention is being felt by householders. Council taxes have gone up and refuse collections around many parts of the country have been reduced to once a fortnight. But there is worse to come. Our last subject is the Draft Energy Efficiency Directive, planned to take effect in 2013. This EU legislation would compel councils to refit council-run properties to the highest energy efficiency standards. The prospect of trying to upgrade a Victorian town hall or 60s civic venues will make a large proportion of council buildings economically obsolete, yet the legislation also applies to new properties. The local government association estimate that complying with the legislation will cost councils £50 billion. These plans will only put councils under even more financial pressure 
at a time that they really don't need it. If you add NHS and MOD buildings to the calculation, the cost of the taxpayer will be unsustainable. I mean, I have great sympathy uh, for councils up and down this country, mostly full of people elected with a genuine desire to serve their local communities who find themselves now impotent in local government because all the big decisions are now taken somewhere else. These are just a few examples of the blind intervention of the EU Parliament that have direct consequences at a local level across the UK. The impact on councillors is widespread. The impact on taxpayers is almost incalculable. The hidden cost being felt in nearly every aspect of local government. A scandalous failure to get best value for the British taxpayer. Well, don't let anybody ever tell you again that Europe is some obscure issue. It affects virtually every aspect of our lives, both nationally and locally. Whether it's our bin collections, our local post offices, the lorries that drive on our roads, everything is affected by EU law.